My next guest sprang to prominence through her portrayal of the, the demon-possessed little girl and the exorcist. And she's about to start shooting Repossessed with Leslie Nielsen, who was recently here in Australia for the Logies and other shows. So I guess for Linda, it's back to square one. From our Hollywood studios, please welcome Miss Linda Blair. Good day. How are you going? Hi, How are you doing? Put another shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> another, yes, p please put another one on for me. <laughs> Good on you. Welcome to the show, Linda. Thank you very much for having me, and hello, Australia. Well, is it true with the, the title Repossessed? Does it look as if you're going back to square one and going to be possessed again as you were in The Exorcist? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's, um, it's a kind of a takeoff, but it's, uh, I'm not playing the same character, though I, I play a girl who gets repossessed. And of course, you'll recognize me in that character a little bit. But it's a comedy, and it's fun, and we're excited. And uh, the, uh, the first one was hard work. And this one will be a lot of fun, so we look forward to it. I speak now on behalf of the, uh, all the male crew here uh, on the show, and I'm sure for every man who is, who is watching the show today, without wanting to sound sexist, you're not the Linda Blair that we remember. You're very, very beautiful. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to come down and see you all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you reckon, boys, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be smorgasbord for you, because we've got every type and every, every colour and shade here and size. Linda, was it very difficult, after The Exorcist, was it very difficult for you to break that image? Uh, well, in America, I did a few television pieces that were very controversial. And I seemed to like doing those types of roles. Then uh, I got more involved in comedy, and I liked that as well. And I found it was a little bit difficult to shake the, uh, the girl that was either, well, everybody remembers me for The Exorcist, and, and that's okay, that's a compliment, but there's so many more things that I want to do. And um, so I just take it all in stride and, and uh, try to take the jokes as they come. <laughs> but was it difficult growing up in public? Oh, it's, uh, it's real hard because you're living in a glass bowl, and I think that people don't realize we're all human beings and we may make mistakes or we may need to just live life and, and sometimes it, it looks different to people on the outside than what it's really happening on, on the inside and yes, it was very difficult. In all that I've read about you, it just seems after that period between The Exorcist and maybe a year or two ago, you might have made some unusual and perhaps wrong career moves. Is, was that due to bad management? Well, uh, there's a couple of things. I, I, I hate to blame things on other people. I, I'm not like that. But I, I pinned a couple of things down recently, and I, the jobs that were with very reliable people that ended up probably being the ones that were the most destructive to my career. I was a very trusting uh, person in my, in my uh, teens and 20s, and uh, I'm 30 now, and gosh, I just don't trust it as much anymore. <laughs> What about your personal life? What sort of a private life do you have? Well, uh, I think when you've been around for a while, and I've been working for 25 years now, people uh, give you a little more respect for your privacy. I think when you're hot, when you're number one and you're new, then everybody wants to know about you, and, um, and, and that's okay, but sometimes it gets a little bit in, in, on the invasion level, and right now I'm fine, and, and people are real nice, and just, they kind of let me go my own way, and I prefer it that way. I'm, I'm, I'm a country girl. I, I like my privacy. You love your horses too, I'm told. Oh, yes, yes, yes I do. I love all animals. I'm getting involved in studying uh, porpoises and whales and uh, at the Dolphin Research Center in Florida. And I hear, uh, I mean, you've got some beautiful uh, waters, and maybe I'll come down and dive down in your area. There are a lot of reasons for you to come down here, and I'm sure you have a lot, of, a lot of company diving around with you, too. <laughs> Linda, you, doing very simple arithmetic, you mentioned that you're now 30 and you started off 25 years ago. It's very young to start off as an actress. Were you, were you pushed by your, your family? Well, my mother had seen an article in a magazine talking about young kids modeling and doing commercials. So, I don't know, she said I was kind of vivacious. Why, I don't know. <laughs> and she got my, myself, my brother, and my sister involved, and I kind of stuck with it. 
work just came my way. I, I do believe sometimes there is a, a destiny involved or whatever. I, I never pursued it because I, I wanted to. I, I didn't know I had the interest in it. I, uh, it just was there all the time. My mother was great. She wasn't a stage mother. She never said I had to. She explained if I saved my money, I could then buy my horses, which I did, and I also wanted to be a veterinarian. I had no idea I would still be uh, involved in the business, but here I am. <laughs> Do you have any children of your own? No, I don't. Um, it uh, just hasn't worked out so far, but the time will come, I'm sure. If you were to have a child, would you mind that child going through exactly what you went through as a young actress? Well, I think it would be very difficult. I've definitely thought about it, and it does make a big difference who you're married to. I think the uh, the father, well, that's unfair to say because many people just live together now, but the father is very important as well. And if you're both in the business, that's very difficult for a child to live up to those standards. And really, if you just raise them and say, whatever you want to do, I will back you. But to show them all of the, oh, especially in this business, there's so much, uh, there's so much, many difficulties that are placed on your personal uh, life and and your job and I mean you don't always you don't know when you have your next job it's it's a hard career I I can't tell tell you that I would tell them to pursue it no if you fell in love with an actor would you marry a fellow performer yeah I, sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, Australian actors, uh, actors will be lined up uh, outside the, the plane when it touches down at either Tullamarine or Mascot in Sydney when you get here. Any, any plans of coming to Australia, Linda? Uh, I would love to. Uh, there's a movie I did last year with the Unknown Comic and some other American actors. Uh, the, un the Unknown Comic, he, he wears a bag on his head. Anyway, we did a film called Up Your Alley, and I know Australia bought it, and I would love to come down and say hi to everyone. I think it's a, a very beautiful country and wonderful people. My first boyfriend was Australian. <laughs> what was his name? <laughs> Rick Springfield. <laughs> of course, yes, yes. Do you see him much now? <laughs> Do I see him much? Yeah. No, he's married, and um, you know how, sometimes how how women are, and um, well, I don't know a lot of a lot of. Uh, girlfriends and wives later on sort of find me threatening, and I, I don't know why. <laughs> but um, so I don't always get to see the, uh, the old boyfriends as much as I'd like to. But he's doing very well. I think he's on with his second child now. Okay, well, if that's the sort of guy you like, I do move in those sort of pop circles. So when you, when you get over here, I'll line up some introductions. There'll be Kamal, Barry Crocker, all of the guys. <laughs> Good luck to you, Linda, and lovely talking to you. Oh, thank you so much, and, and um, I love you all, too, and I can't wait to come down and visit. Thank you. Thank you. In Hollywood, Linda Blair. Lovely lady. We're back with you after this break with another lovely lady who's going to sing for you. Colleen here. Do-do-do-do. <laughs> 